Welcome to episode 15 of season 2 of the Ubuntu UK podcast. It's Monday the 12th of October 2009 and in this episode we're going to review some books. We've had reading, apparently. Had reading? Had reading, yes. yes. <laughs> See, I can't read, that's why I haven't got a book. Okay. <laughs> we'll cover the latest news and events. We've got news about Og Camp, the premiere thing going on up north somewhere on that day on that day <laughs> yes in <laughs> wolverhampton followed by another command line love the, have we <laughs> simon just looked at me as if i know we haven't <laughs> then the, se- <laughs> the second of our interviews from os bar camp in dublin and we delve into the ecosphere finally we have your feedback i'm alan with me this week is tony hiya mate you're right yeah very good thank you thank good you for good. trekking up to studio b yes yeah, so we're back in ubuntu uk podcast studio b mm. aka alan's den <laughs> it's so tidied up it's great i can get in yes aside from this big stack of drinks yeah i'm seeing here. we have the og camp drink stack in here and i'm leaving it with alan for two weeks <laughs> until the event. i'm not sure this is a wise move or not but yeah you might have to count them out and count them in again <laughs> oh yes so That's what have you been up to then other than buying cans of drink well, mostly running around sorting out stuff for og camp i have to say and lug like radio live as well so i haven't really done much computing wise but um yeah so mostly mostly trying to find bits of pa kit and microphones and video stands and all that sort of stuff are we good. set are we ready we're pretty much ready yeah the old camp, two, two weeks isn't it? it is two weeks yeah it'll be about a week and a half by the time this comes out on the mirrors um yeah a bit scary but it's going to be great we're looking forward to it. i went up to london on saturday and met up with dan from the linux outlaws um we went to see kevin smith do it oh, you, you had a mandate with, yes <laughs> <laughs> I had a, an impromptu mandate with dan so that was really good we sort of met up a bit, bit before i had a bit of a chat about old camp and you know find out what we're all going to do and yeah, it's really good. Excellent. Yeah. So you guys have sorted it out for us. Yeah, that's right. That's what right. am I going to do? It's all done. You're going to come along and work. Turn up and, <laughs> turn up and be beautiful. That's all you need to do. Come along, oh big PA. <laughs> cool. Thank you. And um, I don't know why I said thank you. We never say that, do we? Oh, that's fine. Well, I, I, that's I don't object to being thanked. I'll, be, I'll thank you anyway. Go on then. Simon. Hello. What have you been up to then? <laughs> Nothing. Excellent. Laura. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I haven't really. I, I've been trying not to use a computer, I have to say. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, they take, well, they take over your life. Only the really intelligent <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> they take over the now. I try world. not to use them too much. Um, all I've done really is update a spare box to Karmic just to see what's oh, going on. Desktop or laptop? Yeah. Desktop. What do you think of it? Uh, it's Ubuntu. <laughs> Did it work? Uh, yeah. Did the upgrade break? Nope. Oh, that's I haven't good. tested sound though. I haven't got any speakers plugged into that thing. Uh, okay. So. But uh, it smooth enough. Yeah, do release upgrade. Did it? Yeah. Notice anything different? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Nah, okay. not really. All right, <laughs> Mister Apathetic. Over there. <laughs> did you actually turn it on <laughs> <laughs> after the upgrade? Did you upgrading? Hey, I try not to let them get it all well, you, my life. You've so. got to be the only person who hasn't commented on the fading down shutdown screen thing. <sighs> well, see, uh, when I hit power down and walk away, I walk away. <laughs> I don't sit there and go, oh, look, it's shutting down. Oh, oh, yeah, but some of us oh. worry that if we, if, <laughs> we hit, off. if we hit the power button and then put our laptops Maybe in our bags, that they overhurt up. and burn through the bag. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Laura, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. By the way, thanks, Simon. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Simon. <laughs> what have you been thank, up to? Thanks, Simon. Uh, not a huge amount, but I spent a bit of time on Saturday buying stationery for Og Camp. Stationery? Yes. Yeah. Stationery? Really? Stationary, stationary, stationary. How, how am I not involved in any of this? I don't know. It's, it's on the wiki. Yeah. <laughs> there is a big list on the wiki. All you've got to do is say, "Oh yeah, I'll do that." But it's, oh, it's, quite, okay. it's quite good because I like stationary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what kind of stationary? Have, have we got like a glut of staplers or something? <laughs> no, I've got some marker pens and we've got some paper so that we can draw up a schedule. Ah, that's handy. Sticky notes. So people can sign up for things and stick them on the schedule oh, and then cool. we can move them around a bit if necessary. Ah, excellent. Have we got nice stickers that people can write their names on and stick them on their name badges? Oh, badges. Name badges. Well volunteered. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, we've got some blue tack as backup, just because uh-huh. just Bl- everyone just needs blue tack. <laughs> of course, yeah. And somewhere uh, to put... Money? Yeah, money. That's the one. Yes. A wallet? Yes. Ah, this brings us to... Well, we can talk about this a little bit later, maybe, in the oh, okay. old camper section. Oh, yes. hold throw, that throw thought. Ahead. Throw, throw ahead. ahead, yeah. Very good. I'm planning. <laughs> what have you been up to, Alan? Um, I, uh, I went to my local lug um, on Saturday. Oh, oh yeah. our local lug. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, we went last month. We did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Unlike you. Did, you. Did. Oh, yeah, that's right. All yeah. three of us. You went, went to a wedding month. or something. That's right, yes. Supposedly. Very important, yeah. yes. So how was it Nokia, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it was at Nokia in Farnborough. And oh, right. was at IBM. So you, you went to the one that was about two minutes from your house? Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Like we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the one that's 50 miles from my house. Yeah, I went to yeah. one two miles. Anyway, I, I just did a like a 10-minute talk about what's new in Karmic. See, I've made a note. Oh, right. I, yeah, I, I've yeah. looked. I know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just showed them a few new things and stuff. And, yeah. Just and including the shutdown screen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the, well, they saw that because <laughs> by, by accident, I was trying to show them the notification thing by turning the volume up and down on my laptop to make it pop up. <laughs> and I hit the button that makes it shut down <laughs> instead. And, uh, yeah, so they got to see the shutdown screen. So, yeah. It was all right. Thrilling. Mm, yeah. And, oh, and I had a bug fixed. And I want to say thank you to Daniel Chen, who fixed the bug. It wasn't actually a bug, but I reported a bug, and it uh, was a problem with sound on Karmic on my on my laptop. And it turns out it was something related, but yeah, I know. Oh, it was this the, the infamous with the message that was rude? No, not that oh, right, one. Okay. No, not that one. Okay, that's all right. Then. No, not that one. Although that one's quite funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, I had a problem with sound, and um, it turns out it was the modem driver oh and i had to remove the modem driver because it was holding oh. onto the sound card as soon as i removed the modem driver bing it carried on working modem that yeah. is retro yeah yeah i know i didn't even know i had one mm. <laughs> now um eddie uh, davy isn't here this week so um <laughs> eddie. Eddie. <laughs> not only not only is he not here we've changed his name <laughs> yeah he's not here um so uh that's why laura's here um uh, well, it's not no, it's not why, not why laura's here, but... <laughs> laura is official backup he is in the west country somewhere um, so yeah so somebody's going to have to say the famous catchphrase or we could just not okay let's not we've got a couple of book reviews this episode uh, Laura's read one and Simon's read one so Simon can go first because his book was published first <laughs> <laughs> and I've nice. had it for a while on that basis <laughs> uh, what's the book right the book is um, Front End Drupal by he says looking to the right uh, it's Emma Jane Hogbin's book with um, come on help me out Constantin, yeah, Kaffer. Constantin, Constantin yeah. Kaffer. Kaffer, yeah. Anyway, and Emma Jane, of course, we did interview on the show back. Uh, we interviewed her at Fosdem. In fact, we interviewed her in the Eurostar on the way back from Fosdem <laughs> near the toilets again. Was, it, oh, was that this year? <laughs> yeah, it was this. this okay, year. was it that long ago? It was six months ago at least. Frightening. Yeah. So, front end Drew Pound, What's it about? I'll read through what I've written because that's the best way to review the book. Okay. Right, so I'm an inexperienced Drupal user. Uh, I have one um, installation and a a fairly stock theme. I found this book has um, something for Drupal users of all levels. It covers everything from the basics of web page design and installation um, of Drupal before describing how it can be modified to provide a site that is more visually appealing than the vanilla installation. Primarily, it's aimed at those who want to develop their own Drupal theme, and it gives an overview of how Drupal is built, the code types you'll be getting involved with, and suggested ways to work with that code. So that's the first sort of paragraph I've written. It really does go into the absolute basics of how to write a simple web page. Static HTML. And it'll develop on that. Go into XHTML, CSS, and PHP and how they work within Drupal. There's code examples, there's lists of sites to go to, to get themes, and how you can, in fact, tweak them. My main concern with Drupal is the fact that it's all text. You know, on WordPress and things like that, you can easily put graphics into the sidebars and stuff. Yeah, it's got a sort of click-and-draggy, Ajaxy thing. Well, you can't do that easily with Drupal. You have to know a bit of HTML and PHP to do that. Yeah, exactly, to to get it integrated. I had no idea. I've done a bit of sort of Googling, but I couldn't work out how to do it. And and this book goes into the details of how you can do that. Okay. Does that mean you would say Drupal itself is is a less friendly thing to to work with than WordPress, perhaps? Definitely. But then Drupal is so much more than WordPress. Yeah, that's true. If you're going to use it, I mean, I deliberately started it to get experience of Drupal. Mm. I've already got a WordPress blog going, and Drupal was an experiment to see to get, literally get me experience of using it. And did that did that go through the installation and all that kind of it stuff? It does. As well? It goes right, uh, right. Oh, right. Interestingly, right at the back of the book, it's got about installation of Drupal from you know how you do it, um, which is quite useful. Uh, essentially, it is a it's a primer. It covers everything to do with Drupal. It gives you examples of everything to do with Drupal. And, and places to go to get more. So it's it's an excellent book. Is it, is it like a bunch of how-to guides all the way through the book, or is it like how to set up your Drupal site to do this, or is it more like lots of explanations? It's how to ex- explanations and how to expand all the areas of Drupal itself. Cool. So do you think you could sit down and create your own theme based on the principles that the book covers? Definitely. 
Cool. All right. Have I? Oh, no. I, I, I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> no, because, well, you know, life's short and um, there's always 800,000 other things going yeah, on. Yeah, sure. So it, it just sort of explains the concepts and, and you see, when I do, I've looked at WordPress themes and you create a style sheet that's got all the, the content in it. And basically everything was, is within the style sheet um, and an index page where you say which blocks you want where. Is that similar to Similar. Drupal? You can right. do it that way, um, certainly. But it goes into mm. the depths of how every single page works. Um, and the other thing, of course, with Drupal is that being a content management system, you've got users of varying levels of access. And Does it cover the security side? Yeah, of things, yeah. It? Oh, wow. Uh, okay. And it covers the private areas of the site. So you can have the public area and then restricted areas depending on user level and um it goes into that as well oh that's good because uh, that's that's a bit that i don't know much about the whole roles and stuff with drupal I'm yeah so you can it. have separate areas so we can have um i could set up a site so you two could get into it into one particular private part and then tony could get into the other and right we, and we locked off from each other so it really is quite a an in-depth and is it, is it based uh, do you know what version of drupal it's based on is it five or i think six? it's five but because right. it covers uh, migrating to drupal six uh, oh, the book really? as well. So it's really much more than just a book about theming and styles. It's it's a whole administration on Drupal. Yeah, which is kind of interesting because it, I mean it paints itself as a front end Drupal. It says designing, theming, and scripting, but it's just so mm. much more than that. All right. So would you recommend this book to someone else? Oh yeah. If you're starting out with Drupal, I'd definitely point you at this book. To so it it covers the basics. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. Yeah. How much of a real coder person do you have to be? It's got examples in there. Okay. You don't have to be at all, literally cut and paste. And so what was your experience before? So we know before your Before Drupal? No, bef- before that book of uh, experience of Drupal and, and style sheets and None. PHP and all. Really? None. So right, right from on. zero Touched to... Touched yep. Right. Yep. That's Had pretty good. And, uh, that was it. Excellent. Pretty good. Okay, cool. We'll keep listening and we're going to give away the book in a competition a bit later in the episode. Not my book. A pre, a pre, no, no. A pre <laughs> <have> thumbed book. <laughs> no, no, we, we have a, another copy. We should. We'll have we? Yeah. Oh, yes. Somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere somewhere in, in Studio A. Yeah, Studio A somewhere. There's a copy. Studio A storeroom. Yeah. And we also have another book, which has been reviewed by Laura. We do. Um, called Beginning Ubuntu, published by A Press. Yes. It's, <laughs> ri- it's written by the same guy who did the um, Ubuntu Kung Fu, Keir Thomas. Ah. ah. Ubuntu oh, Kung it Fu. is as well. Yeah. There you go. Kung Fu, as we like to Kung say. Kung Fu. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the the bit that I, I found amusing was um, it had the license agreement at the back for the CD saying it was a single-user license. <laughs> <laughs> What's on the CD? Fail. Ubuntu, um, presumably. It's every flavour of the current version of Ubuntu, I think. By flavour, you mean... Zubuntu, Kubuntu, oh, right. Ubuntu... Right. Server Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the exhaustive list is, but that's what it reckons to. Oh, okay. So it's more than a CD, presumably. Uh, it's a DVD. Ah. Yes. Excellent. But you can you know, actually use it on more than one machine. <laughs> you would hope so. <laughs> You'd hope so, yeah. I just thought it was quite amusing to put the, the standard uh, Co- Copy license. and paste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the book aimed at? Do you think? Right. Well, this is what I spent a lot of time trying to work out. Um, oh. uh, because it's called Beginning Ubuntu, which kind of apply, implies that it starts from scratch, and it does. I think I concluded that it's aimed, and I think it does this well, it's aimed at somebody who has geek tendencies. Okay. In a kind of domestic world or in a professional world, you're working in an IT department and you want to learn about Linux or Ubuntu. You're starting from scratch and it tells you the philosophy, why you'd use Linux, um, and then how to change from a Mac to Linux or Windows to Linux. It's really comprehensive and it goes through absolutely everything. The reason it took me a while to kind of work it out, because I kind of assumed that beginning Ubuntu meant, like, beginning, getting up and running, that kind of thing. What, zero? Absolute zero? Um, Yeah, but just somebody as a user wanting to use it, not having to wade through all the philosophy and everything. Um, I guess so, that's tricky. <clears throat> all, all, every, every Ubuntu book has that whole philosophy section mm. of what does Ubuntu mean at the front. I guess you kind of have to have it. You do, but it's kind of making you do all your homework before you realise what the point of doing it is right it's okay. not doing that kind of grab you and then make you want to know more but as i say i think it's more aimed more at somebody who wants at a professional level or they're a bit geeky interested in that kind of thing anyway um because 
in yeah in chapter nine it talks about generating encryption keys and shell shell stuff in oh, wow. chapter 13 uh, okay. And then doesn't cover things like playing music until chapter 18. <laughs> wow. Chapter 19. Okay. And then photos, chapter 20, and office, open office, which is probably one of the most used things in chapter 21. So, yeah. so is it more beginning Linux for system admins, perhaps? Yeah, or help desk support or something was kind of the conclusion I came to. And I think it did that very well. So probably the, the listeners to this podcast that we... we I mean, we don't know everyone who listens to the podcast and we can't really generalise. <laughs> but, you know, what we would expect, you know, technical people who, you know, tend to listen to podcasts, yeah. those kind of people. Yeah, like I say, I mean, somebody who sort of supports Windows, say, as their job and sort of help desk type thing, mm -hmm. it's that kind of skill level, I think, but somebody, but they're wanting to move into Linux or whatever and this tells them everything they might need to know. Um, including things like Open Office and that that they might need to support. And it's quite a chunky book. Is it, it is. is it, I mean, you, you've rattled off some of the things that are in some of the chapters. Is it is it comprehensive or is it like an overview of Play Music and an overview of Open Office and an overview of SSH and that kind of stuff? I or is think, it fairly detailed? I think it's fairly comprehensive. It's certainly like a good starter in each of those areas. But yeah, it's about I think it's about seven hundred pages, including the appendices. Wow. And is it is it a big big bunch of screenshots? Like you know, your average Windowsy book is yeah. is often like so thick because it's full of screenshots. Yeah, exactly. It does as you're flicking through it. Mm. It looks mostly text actually. Yeah, it's not like it's overloaded with screenshots and shows like some examples of shell commands and things. But I think there's a lot of text in there. Yeah, which is the other reason why I don't think it's your kind of average end user introduction because it's right. just like a doorstop for that yeah. so it's um, so. it's written in fairly technical language it's not aimed at i mean could could a, no. could a could a um a non-technical person pick it up and wade through it do you think and uh, that's the thing i think some aspects of it yes okay because it's explained very clearly and very basically so it could be a beginner's book. It could be, but it it'd be, be a slow, you know, read a chapter, have a play for a month or two, and then. But they might lose interest if, if yeah. like, like you say, Open Office is right in chapter twenty. You know, would a would a, a novice user think? Oh, hang on. Yeah. And there's no reason they can't just skip page chapters, but right. if it's they don't know linear. what they're doing, then they won't know what they can and can't skip. Whereas I'd say they could easily skip the bash script a bit. And oh, it covers bash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. But. I think one of the things that I was... One thing that I didn't like too much, just as a specific little thing, was the fact that it says Linux puts you in charge. You're the mechanic as well as the driver and you'll be expected to get your hands dirty every now and then. And uh. while that may be true, <laughs> it's not a good starting point, I felt, unless you're a sysadmin yeah, sure. help desk support, in which case yeah, that's yeah, fair yeah. enough to yeah. say, which is why I think I sort of came to this conclusion that it's somebody who knows this kind of thing mm. well, okay. i guess it's okay to be upfront mm. about the fact that you know it's not i mean the fact that the book isn't complete screenshots all the way through and yeah. there is going to be snippets of script and yeah. it talks about ssh and stuff that is you know quite geeky you you kind of want to prepare them early on that hey this is not this is not just you know point and click your way through the whole experience is it yeah. I, mean, I mean the book isn't designed to be an advocacy tool it's designed to teach people how to use a piece yeah. of software yeah that's true well it's, it's going to hopefully it's, set out the truth rather than Spin. Yeah, it's quite advocacy like I think but yeah. like it, it does say using Linux requires commitment and the realisation that there are probably going to be problems and they need to be overcome and I thought you, you could have just wow. skipped that line big disclaimer do not use this software <laughs> <laughs> so and one thing actually and I wrote this down and I don't think I got this out of the book I think this is just like a feeling that occurred to me when I was reading this on the bus is that Windows isn't the biggest threat Apple is that's the feeling you got from the book <laughs> Yeah, and I can't remember where I got this from, but I was obviously very strongly feeling this at that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, because Apple just works, it's nice to use, well designed and doesn't break. And Ubuntu's good and it's like switching from Windows to Mac in terms of differences. You have to get accustomed to it, but the payback on Mac is greater. And I think that was because of the kind of things that came out. Possibly it was just that first chapter, well it's chapter three, that it just sort of put me in that frame of mind. But maybe mm. I was just being philosophical because wow. it was too early in the morning. That's still quite damning, isn't it? You know, after all these years, you know, are we still saying that about Ubuntu? I mean, I've, I don't want to pull away from the, uh, you know, the book review, but yeah. that's, yeah, it's quite a damning statement. Well, it does. It reminds me of what we, we had chatted with Matthew Paul Thomas last, last uh, yes. episode 
Um, was it? He said maybe it was a combination. In order to overtake them, you've got to catch up with them first. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I quite like that. Yeah. So just just going back to the book, we said that the uh, the CD, sorry, the DVD has got all the different versions of Ubuntu, mm-hmm. Zubuntu, Kubuntu. Does it cover all of them, or does it really just focus on the the GNOME or GNOME? Or does it do version? just the generic stuff? That... Yeah, it's just Ubuntu really. But I don't. I didn't get the impression it was very specific at all. Um, oh, okay. It's just. I mean, it covers a lot of the software and a lot of the. It's all very generic stuff, yeah. I think, to a Debian system. Given there's not much in the way of mm. screenshots, it's not going to show loads of Ubuntu stuff and then miss out all the KDE equivalents yeah. or something, I guess. Yeah. It's, just a, it's just quite a lot of software to cover <laughs> yeah. in in one of the desktops, never mm. mind three different desktops plus. Yeah, but what did, what did you say? You said Open Office, mm. playing music. Does it? I mean, in the playing music section, yeah, is it going to talk about Rhythmbox and Amarok? Yeah. Or is it just going to talk about Rhythmbox? Banshee. I don't know, Banshee I can't remember. Or... But yes, I mean, there's a lot of different options, and yeah. the question that well, is a big book. Well, it is a big book. <laughs> but the question I'd be book. asking as a user is, well, why have I got four different tools, you know, to play my MP3s? Oh, blimey! Yeah. No, it just, just sorry. Spin to the philosophy section and uh, and yeah. understand why. You're <laughs> yeah, and read a little subsection players. on choice. <laughs> is, is there a, such a section? There's a Ubuntu replacements for Windows section, which oh, is quite okay. nice. So it goes through and says like word processing, Open Office, Writer. Right. Music, rhythm box, um, photo editing, GIMP. Okay. Um, oh, that's quite handy. Yeah. So it is kind of a migration. It can help someone migrate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is why I think the kind of the help desky type of support person yeah. is perfect for it. Somebody who's used to Windows. Or maybe um, like a real Windows power user. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Windows yeah. geek. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So for that, I mean, for that kind of person, it's perfect. I think because, like I say, it does cover a lot, and it covers enough that when they want to know more, it, they're in the right direction. So, cool. yeah, excellent. Are we going to give away this book as well? Yeah, okay. <laughs> not carrying it home again. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. So keep listening, and uh, we'll have another competition with that as a prize as well. Let's start the news. The Business Software Alliance have released a report that claims that 41% of software installed on people's computers is illegal, pirated software. Oh, like... What should we do? What should we do? Sounds about right. I mean, I said before, that's part of the reason I came to Linux. Oh, to get away from yeah, all of yeah. that? Yeah, to get away from the culture of ripped off software. There's not that much pirated software on, uh, on Ubuntu or Linux in general. Well, there might be if people download it and install it and run it like games you know people yeah, download right, yeah. stuff off yeah. you know, mm-hmm. peer-to-peer networks and stuff yeah i suppose and music. Suppose you could you could use things like crossover to install <laughs> pirated versions of, of windows applications and some people actually pirate crossover Cause really it's, yeah because <laughs> yeah. it's a pay pay for app isn't it it's um it's not oh. it's not open source is it mm-hmm. pirated versions of windows running virtual box or yeah something. there's another one yeah people pirate um the beta releases of windows 7 Oh, yeah. To run in a virtual machine. <laughs> it happens everywhere. Tony, open your eyes. <laughs> you wouldn't steal a handbag, don't steal a film. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you just said. <laughs> the London Stock Exchange have switched from a Microsoft.net trading platform to one based on Linux. Granted, they bought the entire company, so they now own the platform they run on, but it's on Linux, so that's good, right? Yeah, I guess. They had all sorts of problems with the .NET version. Did they? Uh, yeah, oh. apparently. And I used to see in the, in the uh, trade rags, there were full-page adverts saying that London Stock Exchange runs oh, yeah. on SQL Server 2005 and all this sort of stuff. Um, that didn't last so long. Apparently, they had an outage for like a whole day, which is not a good thing when you're a stock exchange. Oh, Ouch. that's quite mm. bad. <laughs> Oops. Well, Linux rocks. Popular file hosting site at Mediafire has requested that Mozilla remove a Firefox extension called Skip Screen from the site, claiming it breaches Mediafire's acceptable use policy. Uh, with the EFF getting involved and Mozilla backing Skip Screen, the fight continues. It's quite cool, Skip Screen. It's um, you know these websites where you have um, oh, what's it called? Screen. Well, Mediafire is one of them, right. where you can upload humongous files, and then if I give you the link, mm. you go to their site and they give you two options. One is download it for free off of our really really slow servers, oh, or okay. pay like us. Like Rapid Share. Right? Rapid Share right. is okay, another one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And Rapid Share is also supported by Skip Screen, uh-huh. and what it does is if I have Skip Screen installed and I click a link mm. to download something, um, I can just leave the browser 
counting down the 45 seconds or whatever. Right. And I can flick to another cat, a tab and carry on doing what I'm doing. Uh-huh. And when it finishes counting down, skip screen detects and then moves on to the next screen and tells the browser, download the file. So oh, I, don't, okay. I don't have to click anything. You right. Don't, you don't have to watch the adverts. You don't have to do anything. It skips the advert, skips the, the, right. the countdown. Well, it doesn't skip the countdown. It still has to do the countdown, yeah. but you don't have to watch it yeah. and wait for the end. Oh, which is yeah. quite, it's quite it's a cool quite thing. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mediafire went nuts because it uh, means users don't look at their site. They just click the links and then wait for the browser and then ping, they get their fun. To be honest, the few times I've had to use sites like that anyway, I'd leave the countdown running, look at something else in another tab and pop back in a couple yeah, of minutes. So I don't spend two minutes looking at the adverts. If you come back too late, yeah. it times out and it won't let you uh, download it. Uh, uh, so um, it saves all of that. So yeah. Uh, Okay. They're quite nice, yeah. But yeah, I can see why Media Fire are getting yeah, know, yeah, because <laughs> that's it all they do, isn't yeah, it? Destroys their yeah. business model, really. Yeah. Whoops. Uh, well, it doesn't really. The business model is still there. It's just we've got a sneaky way around it. Yeah, but if everyone does that, then that's their that's their revenue down the pan. <laughs> yeah, that's the trouble with ad based revenue in general, isn't it? People have got ad block. Yeah, but it's subscription yeah. based as well, and that you're oh, you're yeah, that right. you're getting around the annoyance factor, which is what you're paying for in the subscription model. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes, yeah, so it's not even pushing people towards the subscription. Exactly. Well, they just have to think up a better feature that people right. would pay for. I think the other thing they're getting annoyed about is after you download the file, it takes you to a page that says "Thanks for using Skip Screen." Um, <laughs> so it's like <laughs> thank you for using Rapid Share or Media Fire or something. Thank, thanks for not using that other site. Oh, by the way, that's where you got it from. Log Radio Live 2009 is in a week and a bit. By the time you get this, like 24th of October. Calculate the date from when we release. He probably knows the hours. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, New Hampton Arts Centre in sunny, sunny Wolverhampton. Excellent. We're all going, aren't we? Yep. Hi. Yep. See you there. I've got to drive a car full of cans of drink. <laughs> up there. We've got and to- make sure nobody drinks them in Lug Radio. Hang on, I've got to drive <gasps> around the whole weekend with those in the boot of my car. You're staying in a hotel, aren't you? Yeah, but well, I'm not going to take them out of the car and put them in the hotel. <laughs> Oh, okay. And then, then no. you do. Well, you and then get, put them back on, in the car. Are they not in the hotel? Are you, you're not staying at the same hotel as everybody else. What? You think I'm going to cart all of those up to my room? Yep. They, they have lifts. <laughs> the cleaners are going to think I'm really weird having <laughs> yeah. all these cases of drink in my room. <laughs> we <laughs> normally have shed loads just, of videos just, uh, and stuff. Yeah. It's it's a bloke. Of, of the two well, options, you know, who's going to look more game. weird? <laughs> <laughs> Even when we were in um, San Francisco for Look Radio Live, we had videos and microphones yeah. and stuff. Mm, that could have looked yeah. a bit dodgy. Uh, yep. yep. All around the world, starting on the 29th of October, there are comic release parties. Yes. Ooh. And you can find out where they are if you visit houseparty.cx, which is <laughs> a domain I registered. Really? Yeah. Because okay. you, know, you know the Windows 7 release parties? Yeah, you houseparty.com dot com is slash it? Windows 7 or right. something. So I registered houseparty.cx. And it points to the wiki page that lists all the release parties around the world. Excellent. Ooh. I thought it was a nice and easy way to remember. Nice one. There's a comedy gig for the benefit of Bletchley Park at uh, the Bloomsbury Theatre in London on the 3rd of November, which is a Tuesday, with Richard Herring, Robert Llewellyn, Robin Ince, and maybe Stephen Fry. We keep giving this one and saying maybe Stephen Fry. Is he going to actually confirm at some point? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He might just keep, all keep being a bit everyone. showbiz. Yeah, <laughs> keep everyone I've, on their toes. I've just checked the website. It's sold out anyway, so <laughs> you might as well stop looking at it. <laughs> oh, Fo- no, apparently you can stand. They're still standing tickets. Sorry, oh, okay. it's the seats that are sold out. Right. Fosdem is on the 6th to the 7th of February next year at University Libra Brussels. Are we going? That's far too soon. <laughs> Not too soon to be thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll think about it, but you know, plans always change. It will come around quicker than you think. Well, yeah. no, I know, I know some, people, been, <laughs> some people. Some people book the Eurostar already. <laughs> every wow. every year, I book the Eurostar, book the hotel, and then end up not going. Oh no! Oh, yeah. no. Oh, you have we'll have Davey. Try and drag him this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's our last episode before the wondrous event that is Og Camp. Scary. Yeah. You're not sweating one bit. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. Um, let's Sorry. play the trailer and then talk about it afterwards. Oi, our theme's better. No, it's not. I think you've broken it now. Mm, guys, maybe we should get on with the promo. Are you wondering what you're going to do with that spare day after Lug Radio Live this year? So were we. But then we had a brainwave. 
I've wondered what that burning smell was. Why not run a joint bar camp-esque event nearby on the Sunday? So nearby, in fact, that it'll be in the Connaught Hotel in Wolverhampton, the official Lug Radio Live Hotel. It's called Og Camp. No, not Odd Camp. That's Og with two Gs. Odd Camp might be more appropriate, though. There'll be all kinds of talks going on during the afternoon. You can talk too if you want to. Plus, there'll be a live recording from each podcast in the main room. Ubuntu UK and Linux Outlaws under one roof. So put it in your diaries now. Sunday, October 25th at the Connaught Hotel in Wolverhampton. Visit ogcamp.org for full details. Sounds like a fun packed event. I love that trailer. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't just played the trailer yet. We're chuckling as if we have. I don't know. It's, brilliant. It's, it's all very television. Well, yeah. radio, radio. <laughs> radio. Yeah. Uh, it was fantastic. Um, yeah. So the last episode, the last. This is the last episode before we do whatever we do at Odd Camp on the mm. live event. Um, and we don't know because it's an unconference. Yes. Yeah. Who knows what's going to? But happen. that's not to say we're not unorganised. It's just <laughs> no, an unconference. Unorganised or disorganised? <laughs> it fits better with unconference if it's unorganised. Yes, boss. Yes. So when when do we get what when is it where is it everything? Well, you've heard that most of that in the trailer, of course. But um, oh, yeah, the trailer that we the, just heard. Yeah, that we just heard. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, not, let's not bother repeating that bit. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> but doors do open at ten thirty, yeah. and there's a welcome at ten forty five, yeah. and the first proper sessions start at eleven a.m. Yeah, that's a bit organised. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it's first come, first served entry. Um, hopefully <laughs> we have to say Tony, that. Tony keeps saying that because he's really twitchy that there's going to be a queue around the block, and I really don't think we're going to. Well, have I, I think it will all be fine. Yeah, there's um, seventy two you know, confirmed on Facebook. Yes which is really good. How much, how much room have we got? Um, the main room holds 100 and the other two rooms to hold 35. Wow. So, you know, if, if there are people who haven't put their name on Facebook, then um, there, we, they, they, there will be more people than that, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, I think it'll be all right. I don't think we're going to have to turn people away, but, you know, better safe than sorry and all that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but just to, as a motivation to help people get there and get there on time, um, if you donate to Og Camp as you're coming in, you can, if you donate a fiver, you can have a limited edition Og Camp mug as a reward. Very nice. Yeah. Do we get one for free? I think we might be able to get one for free. <laughs> Hang on, it is depends this, how much <laughs> money we make back on this. We're, and we're, 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 we're paying for the hotel room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is this some cunning plan? We're not actually getting people to buy mugs. We're telling them it, to donate, it, yes, and we if, give if, them a prize. Yes. Well, if you, yes, that's right. it's like the Fosdem sponsor, sponsorship yes. returns. You make so much, you get a T-shirt. With us, it's mugs. Right, um, and, and it's going to be very nice, aren't they? and yeah, it's worth nice. it because you can use it throughout the day. Then, yes, you can use your drinks that we are supplying <laughs> in the mugs. It'd be yes. brilliant. Um, so, yes, yeah, so come along with the fivers in your sticky little mitts and give us the cash on the way and pick up a mug. Nice one, but you don't have. But you to don't have pay. to. You don't have it's to. Voluntary, yeah. It is voluntary. It is voluntary. This absolutely. is this is just an attempt to not have to pay for the entire hotel yeah. ourselves. Yes, <laughs> it's a, it's a break even attempt. And also yes. spread the love and spread the mugs. Yes, <laughs> they are cool mugs. Because we don't really want to have to bring them home again. <laughs> not really. <laughs> And make sure you take all the drinks with you as well. Yeah. If we have any left, we'll have a Greek style mug smashing. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just to, just to ensure that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So they're really limited edition. Yeah. Fab's done a fantastic design for it. Yeah, they are great. We should talk to us. Uh, we should say thank you to our sponsors yes. as well. Who are they? Who are on the mug. Who are on they the are mug? They are on the mug. Right, they're the Open Learning Centre. Yes. Big folk. Yep. Canonical. Viglin. And of course, uh, Viglin, yeah. Okay. And. Media partner. Yeah. <laughs> Always now, makes me smile because I've got no idea what that means. It means that they're putting an advert in their magazine. Oh, yes. A full page advert, and, and apparently. We, yeah, we're linking to them. Now, hopefully, no, I'm just checking my date. No, uh, subscribers to Linux Format will get the issue just before it <laughs> ends <laughs> with the full page advert in it. But right. it should look really good. Again, Fab did a great job of, of yeah. designing that. Um, and uh, Linux Emporium are sponsoring us as well. And an addition since the last episode, uh, which I know we haven't got in our notes, is Pokebook. The oh, yeah. fantastic new social networking site. It, it is. is brilliant. It's beyond words. Is it pokebook.co.uk? Pokebook.co.uk. It's fantastic. I mean, I've been on there for hours. You just yeah. lose all sense of time. It's amazing. <laughs> words can't explain yeah. how yeah. I feel about Pokebook. It is. It's, and the it's a whole new lease of life. <laughs> yeah. How long have you had your login for Pokebook now? I, I registered really early on. Yeah. I was one of the first. So I actually got Popey on uh, Pokebook. Fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, thank you to all of our sponsors. We couldn't do it without you. And um, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you all, hopefully, at, at Og Camp. Yeah, and if you want to chat to us before then, join us in the IRC channel, hash Og Camp on oh, the yeah. Freenode Network. Yeah, and Twitter identica is Og Camp. And now it's time for Command Line Love. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, I've missed that. Have you? Yeah. 
Huh, right. I do like the way that you're able to invoke <laughs> giggles in Laura when you do that. <laughs> <Some of this>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what's in the segment this week? <laughs> right, this is uh, an interesting variation on a theme. Um, eject, um, I don't know if you tried this, you can eject your DVD or CD player. With the eject Using command. the eject command. Yes. And there's a great okay. little, um, if you use eject um, hyphen or minus T, it basically goes to the CD-ROM, and if it's closed, it ejects it, and if it's ejected, it closes it. Oh, right, okay. Which is quite fun. Uh-huh. If you um, are sat at work and bored, and you know your kids are at home, you can log into your house and, and make their CD drives do weird and funky things, and then they complain over I am, which is always good for a laugh, any <laughs> bored. Well, anyway, um, if you've got a USB stick, and sometimes you need to uh, eject it and mm. then put it back in again. Mm. And all this command, which was nicely found by Popey from uh, our um, supporting site, uh, commandlinefoot.com. All right. No, no. It's um, your, your segment, mate. <laughs> 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 so the command, basically, um, which Popey will um, possibly put on the uh, show notes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you not pre-free it. <laughs> um, enables you to um, eject and then remount a, a USB stick. Without having to lift Without your actually, hand yeah. and pull it out. That's right. I suppose it's useful if it's plugged in the back of your machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, you could, if you're a um, GNOME user or a Kubuntu user, you could make a little button and put this on somewhere on your desktop. So you never have to um, actually retype it. You just push the button and it does it. And prevents wear on the uh, on the connectors as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, if you can contrive any other reasons, let us know. Podcast <laughs> at ubuntu-uk.org. Any reasons for not pulling the USB stick out? Okay, um, something which we've seen increase uh, in, in this last year or so is uh, hackerspace. Uh, so we've actually managed to grab a bunch of people here uh, to actually tell us what it actually is. So, uh, so who have we actually got here? Sorry, what's your name? I go by Dorothy Gale. Because I'm not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's Jeffrey Rowe. Robert Fitzsimons. Oh, okay, that's great. Um, can you actually tell us um, what it actually is? I mean, you know, it's something we've heard about, but we have no idea what it is. Well, a hackerspace is just a technology collective. Uh, we have a space that's open 24-7 to our members. Uh, they're allowed to work on projects, use the wisdom of the community for their projects, and have a lot of fun. What's it mean to you, Rob? It, 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 it's actually a kind of a, a renewed um, pro, uh, philosophy or concept uh, l- based on things that happened in the 80s and, and maybe, I mean, I might, I might be wrong in the days, like with the loft and um, it, it, it's an international concept in terms of there's, there's lots of hackerspaces are, uh, around the world. So we've got Ireland, Seabase and uh, Metalab in Austria and um, I don't know if there's many in the UK at the moment. I know there's some groups, but I don't know if they actually physically have spaces yet at the moment. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. So, so just so I understand it correctly, it's somewhere where anyone can go at any point of any day? Uh, yes. It, it, yes and no. It, it depends on the local kind of structure that the, the hackerspace decides. Uh, is it going to be open to the public? Is it going to be private members only? Or, uh, but it all depends. But with our specific space, it's open 24-7. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the space that you do have here. Um, what is it? Where is it? It's what? at 40 Aaron Key. That's over on the Liffey on the north side of Dublin. Uh, we've had the space now for almost six months. Uh, we started as a group back in January. It took us about three months to get a space that we liked. Um, we're now up to around 24, 26 members and a lot of potential people that want to join up. Um, they're all dues-paying members as well. Um, it's a great little space. It consists of three major rooms, um, has internet activity, nice workbenches, uh, areas for people to get together in private or you know with the whole group. So uh, what sort of projects would people actually be bringing to, to your space? That's the best thing about our space is that it is a blank canvas to do whatever you want. We have people that are working on everything from say uh, working on macrame to like uh, what was it? it was a knitting project with linear electronics into projects. We have people making LED towers, people are working with robotics, people that are coding, people that are developing websites, the whole gamut of any kind of geeky interest you could have. For instance, me and Jeff here are going to be starting to work on making guitar amplifiers and effects pedals. Okay, so Jeff, what's your interest in guitars? Are you a musician? No, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stealing him. <laughs> I've got the electronics background, so that's where I'm coming in. No musical background whatsoever. Okay, so what are, how are the guitar amps that you're going to be working on different from what I could buy from Marshall or whatever? 
Uh, it's it's about a level of customization. You know, you can only buy what Marshall have. You know. You know, where when I'm going to create it, I'm going to create it for the sounds the end user wants. So does he want a heavily tone bass? Does he want distortion? So it's more customizing the product for the end user, which will be ourselves. It's not a product for uh, for sale. It's all about creating products for us. Can it help me play the guitar better? No. No, you're horrible. Ah, damn it. Oh, that's me screwed then. Well, you could make a project with, say, maybe something like an Arduino and a, and a Wii guitar or something, perhaps. I mean, that sounds like a fun project in the works there, Tony. Yeah. Uh, there is actually, I think, uh, a hack space in Southampton where I live, or hack space in Southampton. Um, is it uh, an international collective? Um, no, we're, we're not really, we're not linked to any one, uh, you know, uh, ideology. Everybody runs their hacker spaces differently. Um, there is a framework that we followed that was provided by members of the CCC that, uh, that we followed. We kind of take some basic tenets and rules from them, uh, setting up the space and, and the availability that we we're going to provide and the services that we we're going to provide in the space. But it's pretty much, again, it's pretty much what anybody wants to do or what that collective wants to do. Well, there is sort of international collaborations. Everyone uh, follows kind of design patterns, where there's a general set of principles of what will work and what won't work. So it's all the things that people have learned from their experience of setting up spaces, and they share with the community so other spaces don't fall uh, into the same traps as previous spaces. So, so I mean, th- this actual space you've got set aside, presumably that's rented or, or, or you've got, you know, bought or something like that but even so uh, there must be some sort of quite large expense to that uh, how, how is it actually funded I mean is it sponsorship or? Uh, we, we uh, all the members um, pay essentially a membership fee we, we have um, it's, a, it's quite expensive actually we'd love it to be a lot less than this but it's 50 euros a month I'm not even sure what that is pounds 40 pounds yeah about that oh, no, yeah. It's, it's, yeah it's about 40 pounds Forty pounds, uh, ter- uh, fifty euros a month, and that covers all our costs, so covering our rent, uh, gas, electricity, internet access, council rates. Um, we, we, we're we're not in the position yet to be fundraising for stuff, you know, like so, some so one of the hackerspace NYC resistor, they have a laser, you know, <laughs> the lasing etch- etching machine. Um, so they're, they're things, but they're very expensive. So we have more mundane things to to be spending money on. The other issue is, is we, we it, it is relatively expensive in because we're in Dublin City, the capital city, to um, to rent. So other locations actually can probably charge far less um, in terms of uh, their membership fee because their rents are going to be inherently less than ours would be. But it, it doesn't preclude uh, most of our members. I think there is some. Everybody's going to have difficulties in this in this recession, but most people seem to be able to justify it to themselves and, and are making good use of the space as well okay, okay so I'm quite new uh, so I, I'm only visiting Dublin for say a weekend or something if, if I wanted to work on a project whilst I was here would I, would I be able to turn up and, and, and contribute just and pay for like the weekend or something well, well, the, best, the best thing to do is we have a, a website tog.ie tog.ie um, to go onto the website ask is there anybody going to be in this space even though the space is available 24-7 all members have keys but n- nobody is, is there 24 7 so it's more of a case of if somebody wants to come and visit or wants to come and join in a project we have a uh, the, the, a kind of a blog page that shows like if, if any of, or check the mailing list or the best place is actually to join in, in the IRC room uh, to see who's around so what's, what's, what's your IRC channel it's it's on free note um, it's uh, hash tog <laughs> uh, easy to remember <laughs> so if I'm interested in doing some uh, hardware hacking or working on some cool electronics project, but I'm not an electronics engineer and I haven't got a you know, A-level in it or something, can I get help? Of course. You, whatever the community can offer you, we will be happy to give. Uh, like, you know, everyone's working collaboratively on some projects. We're not all working together on one singular project. But if there's someone there with the knowledge and they want to share it, there's no reason why they wouldn't provide it. That's the sort of thing. We have a lot of members who actually don't know about these particular topics so we started what are uh, essentially group nights where people would uh, assemble in a group who are interested in the same topic so you know you don't we have beginners to uh, to experts ranging so like an example would be on monday we run our microcontroller night where anyone interested in microcontrollers can come along and go hey i'm trying to get this working can anyone give me a hand so we're trying to run event nights or group nights to try and bring the general level of the group up to a higher standard. 
Now, who are your members? I mean, I would have said, you know, hardware hacking is, is you know, the uh, long-haired hippies with beards tinkering with sort of breadboards and circuit boards and stuff. But have you, you guys are... an episode of the A-Team? That's pretty much what you look like. We have... Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, that's even No, better. we're just from all the walks of life. Everyone who's there. I mean, we have people that work in business jobs. We have people who don't have jobs. We have people that, you know, work in just about every field of life who just have a genuine interest in technology. Have you, each of you got a favorite project that you've done? Um, wow. Describe I think, it. I think, I think right now Rob would be the best one to talk about a favorite project. We we I, I've I've kind of been interested in, in using LEDs and lasers and, and things like that. So um, I I think some of you have probably seen the videos on YouTube of of an LED cube. You know where you get LEDs and you kind of put them into a structure in a cube shape. Uh, a couple of months ago, we got kind of got invited to attend uh, a software development conference, Epic Epicenter, Epic Center here in, in Dublin and I kind of said All right, I'm going to build a project and I, go, I was going to build an LED cube I said that's too small I need to make it bigger so I built an LED cube which was four times or not four times bigger but it, it was like four LED cubes tacked in, on top of each other and it's a LED tower um, and I spent I don't know it was, we did, I only did it about a month some of the guys helped me with some of it but like a lot of late nights and um, one or two sleepovers <laughs> So how many evenings a week do you go out to the hack space and then, you know, tinker? Regularly, we do, I, I usually just attend the, the microcontroller Mondays and the program on Wednesdays, but I go if other people are there. So if anybody wants to go there and says, I want to be there on Thursday night, well, there's a good chance I'll probably go on a Thursday night. Uh, it's open 24-7. You can go and come and please whenever you want. You can be there on Christmas Day at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Nothing stopping you. Uh, I, I, I would be. Unfortunately, I live somewhere somewhere else. Um, well, what, what's it actually like the space? I mean, I've got this vision that's a kind of a mixture of something with bean bags and ambient lighting and a garden shed full of electronics and soldering irons. Is that about right? If you could ditch it into an office space, then yes. Right. Okay. It, 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 it's basically in a is it a Georgian building? It's yeah. kind of you know your three four story kind of building. We've, we're on the second floor. We've got three roughly the same size rooms. Uh, they're about twelve square meters each. Um, at the moment, and we, we uh, one of the first projects we built was we, we we spent some time building some benches. So we got a load of um, wood and um, plywood, um, and and built built the benches. Um, so, so you're carpenters as well as electronics geeks. Yeah, it, it, and that's it, I think we, we we were only just the other day trying to figure out trying to get some insurance for the space, and you're trying to explain to a, an insurance man what do we do in this space, and and he kind of came up. So it's like a, a, a school workshop. I was basically saying, yeah, if if you take a woodwork room, a metal work room, a science lab, a computer lab, and a home economics room and put them all together, that's kind of what the space is potentially useful for. You know, there that all of those in. Uh, and was he happy with that? He hasn't got back to me with a uh, quote yet. Right, so. okay, yeah. <laughs> Wait, it'll, yeah, it'll be like insuring there, there's a, a 60 year old Rolls Royce, probably. There's something that we're starting on right now is a lot of life coaching stuff. I'm going to be giving a workshop on how to maximize your CV and deal with recruiters in Dublin to get jobs. So there's really nothing stopping anyone from coming up with a good idea. And if people get behind it, that's something that we do. So it's not limited to electronics. I was going to say, so you're looking beyond kind of even electronics or even the physical element of, of craft. You're looking at soft skills to use the jargon. Exactly. Excellent. Okay, so we talked about your IRC channel and the website, but is there anywhere else people can find out more if they want to get involved? I think the, probably the most reference for the, for the guys in the UK is, is actually to go to the hackerspaces.org website. There are a number of groups in, in, the, in the UK um, that are involved, and I don't know if many of them have actually physical spaces, but I do know that they meet up in pubs, which is exactly what we did. We would go to a pub... <coughs> break out you know the tools and you're sitting there for three or four hours and you're kind of getting all these funny looks across the bar why are these people using laptops you know but i think that's the best thing hackerspaces.org for so hang on did you have your pie your chips and a pint followed by your soldering iron on the pub bar sat at a stool yeah <laughs> <laughs> like we're, we're all a lot of us that were originally involved were active in the kind of 2600 meetup space so we've been doing essentially this for a long time but without being able to work together in a, in a very collaborative way so it's a, a, for us it's an extension on with that but we've been able to rope in far more through the, through the, the iLogs or the, the Linux user groups and the OSS bar camps and, and those types of um, uh, groups. So now you've got a space to do it all in and you haven't got to clutter up the pub with it? We still go to the pub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to take your soldering on with you. 
Well, it's probably in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us, gentlemen, and uh, we'd better go on and enjoy the rest of the party now. Yeah, I think so. Thanks, Thanks so much. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you. So we've got two competitions this episode. One to win the beginning Ubuntu Linux book that I reviewed earlier, and one to win the front-end Drupal book that Simon reviewed earlier. So if you want to win the beginning Ubuntu Linux book, you need to answer this question. What was the name of the other book we reviewed by Kia Thomas? Uh, this season? No, last, last season. Last season. I think. <laughs> oh, we've done so many seasons now. <laughs> it's so difficult to tell. It was in the first two seasons. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to win Front End Drupal, what was the name of the episode in which we interviewed Emma Jane Hogbin? The name of the episode. The name of the episode, yeah. not the, the number. Well, yeah. Or maybe both. But yeah. It has to be the name. It has to be the name. Has to be the name. Has to be the name. Laura um, has spoken. So the closing date for entries is the 2nd of November. Send your answers to competition at ubuntu-uk.org. And sadly, we'll only ship to the UK and Europe. Good luck, everybody. It's time for the Ecosphere. Uh, yeah. Is that the best you could do? I thought you were going to protest strongly at Ecosphere. This is as strong as I can protest right now. Okay. It's normally Dave that comes up with the really silly names for this segment, so he's this not here true. this time. Okay. So someone else, someone else, want to step up to the mark and come up with a silly name? I'm not as silly as Dave. I can't possibly help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're in that t-shirt. No, <laughs> <don't we>? <laughs> <laughs> meow. Okay. So, what's in the meow sphere? <laughs> <laughs> now you're just being silly. It's the only way. Okay, so Tanner Helland is back with a comprehensive set of 10 features he and probably a lot of other people would like to see in Ubuntu 8.10. Sorry, 10.10. 8.10. Yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. Okay, so what's on the list? Uh, loads. Okay. Actually, loads. And it's not just 10, because he's, he's divided up into 10 separate posts. And then within those, <laughs> there's loads of individual things that are kind of grouped together. I see number five is our good old favourite, solid functional video editing. Yes. <laughs> he obviously hasn't used the... The open shop video editor that we, that we now must say nice things, things about yes. before they make a video, <laughs> <laughs> make another video of us with yes. clown heads. Yeah, some of them are quite you know the usual kind of things like make it look nicer or make a music player that's great and you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he talks about the paper cuts as well, doesn't he? Why Ubuntu ten ten and not ten four? Because it's a year away. Oh, just because. Yeah, just I don't know. It I just guess, seemed unambitious, that really. Well, well I don't know, because it's ten things, so it's ten things about ten, uh, ten, you know, kind of makes sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and plus a year is a nice target to go yeah. for. Plus plus the other thing is 10.04 is LTS, and so you can expect LTS to be a bit more conservative. Yeah, that's like boring. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. You said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Ubuntu uh, developers have been reporting pain whilst testing as the repositories are very busy just after a beta release. Yeah. One of the, well, one of the problems is the developers keep rebuilding stuff yeah. and they have to pull in packages. And because the beta released and once the beta released, people are testing stuff, so the developers have got to work on it and sure. fix it. And the repositories slow down a bit because everyone's downloading updates. So a lot of people wait till a beta before doing any testing and then find a load of bugs. Yeah, and then, people using and it then the, the guys can't work on it. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. And then there was some talk. I'll put a link to the. Um, I might put a link <laughs> <laughs> before anyone says anything. Rash promises. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I'd get that in there. I might put a link to the discussion in the the developer list. Um, and they were talking about things like maybe having a preferred set of mirrors that's only allowed. Uh, only developers are allowed in. Oh. So they get, you know, the bandwidth yeah. to themselves and they get the server to themselves kind of thing. That kind of thing. Maybe if you're in a certain group or, you know, something. I don't know. Yeah. Sounds like an idea. Maybe if you're a Motu or something. Yeah. Oh, you know what that is? <laughs> yeah. I remember talking to Daniel Holbach about it. Ah, okay. On the telephone. Ubuntu has a new community council. Yeah, I've heard they let any old chap in these days. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. Congratulations, Popey. Yes. Thank you very much. So Alan has managed to con his way into being elected to the Community Council. Yeah. What is the Community Council and what are you doing on it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you plan to do on it? Well, according to the website, <laughs> he says, trying to remember what on earth the Community Council is. Um, <laughs> according to the website, right, okay. It says the social structures and community processes of Ubuntu are, sp are supervised by the Community Council. It's the CC that approves the creation of new teams and projects, 
and appoints team leaders. In addition, the CC is the body responsible for the code of conduct and tasked with ensuring that maintainers and other community members follow its guidelines. So basically... Um, you bring two police. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Excellent. We lay the smack down on people. <laughs> <laughs> the moral guardians of Ubuntu. Yes. Well, you weren't the only person to be elected uh, at this round of Absolutely. elections. There are several others, including a bit of a who's who of a former Ubuntu UK podcast interviewee guests. Really? Because Richard Johnson, who we interviewed uh, earlier this season, Mike Basinger, who we emailed, uh, interviewed in the first season, um, and Daniel Holbach, who we interviewed on the phone. Um, I think those are all the people that we've had, but there are quite a few names on the list. Yeah. Congratulations to everybody who got yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite an important role. You have to go to meetings every couple of weeks and stuff, don't you? Yeah, every two weeks there's an online IRC meeting. Well, part of the reason why there's more people in the CC now is to make it easier for it to be quorum, uh, have a quorum at the meeting, because previously there weren't. There was often times when people couldn't get to the meeting and then there weren't enough people to make any decisions and stuff. So now there's more people, right. so there's more chance of that uh, happening. So are you, uh, are you on the CC forever? How long does your um, term last? Uh, two years. So the the reason why that we had this vote is because the people who were previously on it expired after two years, okay. and then we had a vote. Well, they didn't. <laughs> and you'll expire. They didn't, expire. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't all expire. They just their membership of the CC expired. Is it true you have to polish Jono's shoes? No, absolutely not. He okay. has to polish ours. <laughs> oh, right. okay. oh, I like that. <laughs> He's paid to do it. Yeah. TomTom is constructing a series of all-in-one car navigation systems. Those devices are running Linux, so they have been a target for experimentation and hacking. Uh, I've had a TomTom uh, Go 300 for years, and I remember going in there and I changed the boot screen to have one with a tux on it. Oh. <laughs> that was about as far as my hacking got. Yeah. Um, inclu- anyway, so they've been exper- a target for experimentation and hacking, including an open operating software version called OpenTom. But there's a step further now because somebody's reverse engineered the voice pack. Actually, it's, it's about two years old. I stumbled oh, across right. this post, and it is quite old, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a couple of years old. But yeah, it turns out that the the voice files are just OGs, like packed together. Oh, what a bunch of OG files packed together. So I thought maybe we should perhaps make Ooh. one. <laughs> Aya. 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 You yes, reach your destination. <laughs> 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 if we all do it in Laura's voice, <laughs> yeah, apart from Laura, apart from, from you, <laughs> yeah, you have to do it. In a We're bound voice. to end up being, yeah, being hit, probably. Uh, so yeah, we'll have a go at making one. Just put it on George the website. For, yeah, George Foreman. <laughs> George <laughs> Formby. George Foreman's <laughs> the boss. <laughs> George Foreman's the grill. Um, cleaning windows. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, well, let's give it a go and yeah. uh, see if anybody's interested in downloading it. And they can listen to us, give them directions and help them get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Would we get blamed, though, if they got lost? Only if we deliberately put the turn left and turn <laughs> right, right in the wrong, wrong right. places. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be fun. Yeah. And that's all that's in the meowosphere this time. It's time for your feedback. We've had an email from Mark Laws who writes in and says... Just wanted to air my views on the Ubuntu software. I think the idea of a uh, Ubuntu software store, I assume that is, I think the idea of a simplified synaptic is brilliant. However, I strongly disagree with the idea of including non-free software. In my opinion, paying for software in Ubuntu goes against its core principles. Whilst the user still has a choice to install software, which is a cost, I think this opens the floodgates for commercial non-free applications to be bought into Ubuntu. In my view, this would confuse the new user that has been told that software for Ubuntu is free. Also, how long until NVIDIA charges to install proprietary graphics drivers through the software store? A hmm. number of sort of interesting issues there. Yeah. Well, nobody yeah. says that told that software for Ubuntu is free. We say that Ubuntu itself is free. Yeah, true. And we kind of say that you can get everything for free on it. But, I mean, there's no reason why there can't be a filter on the store that mm-hmm. lists only free stuff. Yeah, and have a tick box for showing me commercial evil stuff. Yeah. That's kind of how it works at the moment, isn't it, when you do Yeah, search. but it's on by default. Yeah. The multi multiverse stuff yeah. is on by default, yeah. but this is talking. He's talking about not non free in the FSF sense, but non free in the cost sense. Cost I think. Sense. Nvidia don't charge for Windows drivers, do they? No, but I think he's just saying you know they it, could it, do. It, there is something that's, yeah, 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 down the journey towards mm. evil pay for software. So if Ubuntu update um, the Ubuntu software store. Is it just going to stay with Ubuntu or is it going to get passed to uh, you know other distros? Is it going to get to Debian? Uh, it's, I think it's an upstream project, isn't it? It's not, a, it's not Ubuntu specific. It's it's, a I mean, that's why it's called... Isn't it? Yeah, it's called Software Center. It's not called Ubuntu Software Center. Hmm. So in theory, yeah. It's so like, you won't be able to say, Ubuntu, blah, 
and go to Debian and flounce off and to flounce somewhere off else. Somewhere else because, because they'll get it will still be in Debian. Yeah. Although I'm guessing Debian probably won't, won't run their own software store for commercial applications or for, for you know paid for applications. No, probably. but they might they might take the the GUI for you know oh, yeah, for yeah. doing free stuff. Yeah, and then patch out the bit that says price. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, interviewed Neil um, from the Open Merla Project on the last show, and he sent us a voicemail. Hi, Laura, Tony, Dave, Simon, and Alan. I just wanted to give you an audio thank you for having me on the podcast, episode 13 of season two, to talk about my dental software project, Open Merla. Um, as a result of that exposure, the project took a giant leap forwards in a direction that I would have never foreseen. A gent named Philippe Le Toquin excuse my pronunciation, caught me on IRC and said he would like to use the Launchpad tools to translate the application into French. Two weeks later and the job is done, Philippe has translated over 600 phrases. Um, it, if your default language and default environment is set as French, Open Mola will start in the French interface now. You can also choose a language at runtime, selecting either French or English from the menu. Well, the reason I'm uh, sending this audio is because I think it proves the power of free software. This functionality is of absolutely no use to me. I failed my French O-level twice, but it demonstrates the flexibility that you get out of the box. People contribute stuff to customize the software, and everyone's a winner. To my knowledge, this is the only bilingual dental database software on the market, and the breaking news is a Spanish version may be forthcoming. A chap from uh, South America contacted me also. I've outlined the steps taken to translate the app on http colon slash slash openmolar.wiki.com slash translation and many thanks to Launchpad for providing such good translation facilities. Another couple of contacts I've had since the show was the two Alans from the Open Learning Center who are considering doing some sysadmin support for future Open Molar practices and Chris from texttools.co.uk who discussed the possible addition of SMS text messaging services to the app. So, thanks again. Keep up the great work on the podcast. Congrats to Alan on his recent election. And a toast to Karmic, which appears to be the best Ubuntu yet by a country mile. Au revoir, Neil Zerroin Golfer. That's really good. It's good to see that we've um, yeah. helped raise the profile of his project, and now he's got translated in other languages as well. This means that people actually listen to the show and pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, one person has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite a scary thought, anyway. Similarly, we've had a voicemail from Phil Willoughby about his Open Cycle project. The idea behind Open Cycle Team is, a, is a, that it's a cycle team which anyone can join. You don't need to um, get anyone's permission or anything. You just need to get an uh, Open Cycle Team shirt and wear it. And simply by doing that, you're part of the Open Cycle Team. And we've posted the designs for those jerseys on our website, opencycleteam.org. And if you uh, wish to get a jersey to join the Open Cycle team, you can just download those artwork files and send them to any jersey printer in the world. Pretty much get it printed in whatever colours you like or even get something else printed and stick our name on it. It doesn't really matter. And just by doing that, you're part of the Open Cycle team. We needed some other logos on there to make it look more like a professional cycling jersey. Um, and we so we looked at the... Uh, products we use and the ones we get value from and particularly the ones that are free to acquire and free for everyone to use and um, we decided that we we wanted to promote Ubuntu because that's something we all value very much basically we put the Ubuntu logo down the side panels of our jersey um, and we're very pleased with the uh, result the whole uh, thing looks um, very much like a properly designed cycle jersey would. Really, I threw it together in a couple of hours one evening. That's rather cool. Yeah. yeah. Right, huh? Might get one of those. Very nice when I'm blatting to and from work on my uh, push iron in the mornings. Yeah, I probably won't get one. No. <laughs> That's right, you've got a bike. <laughs> well, my bike was stolen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he hadn't installed the software package on it that tells... That, uh, anyway, yeah. <clears throat> on the last episode, there was a comment about juice not working correctly. Which I can't actually remember. Um, but Juice Somebody said a, that it just kept downloading on our show oh, over and over again. It repeatedly oh, downloaded, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Albert said, uh, sent in an email saying... I was listening to episode 14 and heard the comment about Juice not working correctly. 
I'm using Ju- Juice. Ver- I can't say Juice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Juice version two point two on Windows, and it definitely downloads the last four Ubuntu UK podcasts every day. Actually, if I manually get it to check for an update, it downloads them again. So today, I've downloaded the last four podcasts twice. Sorry for messing up the stats. <laughs> so that's why it looks like we've downloaded yeah. so many. I don't have the problem with it. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, I don't have the problem with it only partially downloading them. This mm. doesn't appear to be happening with any of my other podcasts that Juice manages for me. I wonder if it's because we have our funky mirror thing that points the client, it, it points the client at a different mirror and I have a feeling he's getting load balanced onto a different mirror and Juice records the full URL of the file you got, mm. not the URL, the, the original URL. So I think that could be it. W- for HTTP fans, I think we use a 302 redirect, don't we? Get you. <laughs> so, um, yes. Oh, uh, that could be. And that the, uh, Yeah, okay, that will, that will make I'll some sense, I'll tell you what, I'll, I've got a, a Windows VM. Okay. And I'll try it, and I'll point it through my proxy server to see what addresses it's going to. Yeah, good idea. Mm, yeah, I'll do that. And we had a couple of emails from other people, Richard Hillebrink and Mark Westwood, who have the same the same problem. Richard, or uh, rather bravely, runs um, Juice on Windows under Wine, uh, on Linux under Wine, which is... Uh, novel. Novel, yeah. <laughs> he says the same problem exists there, so that's consistent and, at least, I suppose. And apparently on f1weekly.com. Yeah, it's so not, not the only us. ones. Maybe that's a compare and contrast exercise mm. for Alan there. Mm. Ken Peter has tweeted us, or dented us, to say... I remember UPC talked about automate transcription before, so I wonder if you guys know any transcription software, e.g. for lecture audio. It wasn't automatic. It was manual. Yes. It was very manual. Mm. <laughs> but it was a nice manual, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite a pleasant process. Yeah, you, you, know, you listen to it, pause it, type what it said, listen to another bit, type another bit, type who it was that said it. It's, what, it's very manual. What was it called? It was called... It was called something very obvious, wasn't it? Translate. Something like Transcriber or something like that. I think like it is that. called yeah. Transcriber, yes. But if you go to our website, I think there's a Are we going to link, link to it in the show somewhere. notes? Wasn't there a link on the Launchpad project for translating podcasts or something? As we all type apt cache search. Yes, Transcriber. Yes. And finally, Jacob from the US says... Why is it always me? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bizarre email to get <laughs> I came across something funny that would make a good bit on the show it's a website for kitten adoption oh that's relevant but yeah. uh, he says that the html html is so foul it segfaults any ubuntu machine with an nvidia card <laughs> nice. hey! the code looks like it was generated with netscape for windows 98 it happens on both my Ubuntu machines, it's home and work, and by a couple of people on the Ubuntu forums. And uh, Alan maybe will put the <laughs> uh, Alan will put the link um, yeah, probably, to the to the website. I probably won't make notes. it a link. I'll probably just yeah. put the piece of text, just in yeah. case anyone you know accidentally clicks it and then you know sues me. <laughs> I, it, it, I tried it on my laptop and it didn't actually crash it, but it is a horrible page. It's it really bad Have HTML. You got N- Nvidia. No. no. Oh, so. that would be why. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh look it's quarter to 11 Tony's getting grumpy <laughs> me <laughs> well there we go um, yeah and uh, that's all your feedback this time well thanks for listening and thanks to everyone who took part via Twitter and Identica and sent us emails if you'd like to get hold of us you can email the show via podcast at ubuntu-uk.org you can leave us a voicemail in a number of ways. Telephone 0845 508 1986 or VoIP podcast at sip.ubuntu-uk.org and finally Skype us at Ubuntu UK Podcast. If you're into the microblogging, you can send us your comments and get updates from recording sessions on Identica or Twitter where we are at UUPC. Alternatively, if you're into IRC, you can chat to us via the hash ubuntu-uk dash podcast channel on the Freenod IRC network. Now we were told we had to promote this more heavily. Yes. Josh, Josh, Holland, Josh Holland said yeah. there's not enough people in there and he needs to invoke his uh, English pedantry more on more people. <laughs> so that's hash Ubuntu dash UK dash podcast. Join our Facebook fan page. Search for Ubuntu UK podcast. We welcome just a moment. Come on, I loves reviews or rants and feedback, both positive and negative. So please do get in touch. 
Thanks also to our network of community mirrors listed on the website. They are. They are. Finally. I was just going to make sure that I didn't say it wrong like I did last time. Did you? Oh, yes. What did you say wrong? Something like our community of network mirrors and (laughs) you you all laughed at me. (laughs) So we hope to see as many of you as possible at Og Camp. Yeah, absolutely. Because the next episode's coming from Og Camp. Scary. We'll see you there. (laughs) Bye. 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 Bye.